Good morning, my extremely good friends. It's Roger, Mud Fossil University. Today, going to solve several different issues with one fell swoop. Now, explain the coronal heating problem, please. This is from Montana State University. They're asking, can you somebody explain this? And I think I can. This problem is, is that the the surface of the sun is six thousand degrees, and in the ex stream out solar corona, which is right at the edge of, of its influence, it's millions of degrees. Now, why is this? And then they also can't explain why it's given off all these heavy metals and nickel and, cal uh, nickel and calcium and uh, iron and all of these things that are in the human body. Why is it doing that? The question of why the solar corona is so hot remains one of the most exciting astronomy puzzles for the last 60 years. Well, let's examine what that's all about, and let's talk about what the vacuum of space consists of. All right, this is the typical opinion of what space is. As such, space is mostly vacuum because gravity have accumulated the mass. It is because there are no gas particles in space. That's not true at all. But that's a common opinion, and that is what you will hear from the experts. Now, let's look at that and examine that in, in a little more detail. All right, so the common misconception of space is that there is nothing, and there's no gases. Well, these are gases, and these gases were analyzed by the uh, Rosetta mission. The Philae lander landed on this comet, Comet 67P, and it took samples. And let's look at what the samples are, because they're very interesting. And this is what's spewing into space. First of all, we notice all kinds of little debris in space. And the sun parches all of these things. And any sunlight parches these things. This has become visible because of the organic nature of it and its wetness, really. This is not this is not water whatsoever. This is organic matter, and it's flowing in copious quantities from the things that are sp spinning around in the solar system. And therefore, the atmosphere in space is not a vacuum. It's loaded with these kind of things. And let's see what the astronauts have to say about it. Okay, you saw Comet 67P, and you saw all of the gases that, in that coma that we're shooting out of there. Now, I'm going to show you what the chemical analysis is and what uh, NASA has to say about it. But the astronauts say when they go into space, when they come back, it says, when astronauts return from a spacewalk, remove their helmets, they're welcome back with a peculiar smell. Order is distinct, weird, something astronauts describe like seared steak. Or hot metal and that's because it is that chemical consistency coming from the things that are in space that are biological and here's the evidence okay this is the story they sent a lander out to comet 67p uh, and it landed on 67p and it did a complete analysis of what the thing consisted of now, um, what they found out was a very complex organic molecules. And what I discovered, and I followed it from the day they started this thing up until they crashed the, the lander and destroyed it. It is a biological entity, and I understand the anatomy. Now, let's see what they have to say about these molecules that they, they analyzed out there. What is Comma 67P made of? All right, this is Gizmodo, by the way. But they're, they're reporting on what NASA said about 67P. And it said in October 2015, they analyzed with Rosetta's onboard mass spectrometer each of these grains containing carbon-based molecules bound together in very, very large structures, similar to the organic matter found in carbonaceous chondrite meteors here on Earth because they're all made from the same stuff. Now, our analysis reveals carbon in a far more complex form than expected, the author on the new study said in a statement. It is so complex we cannot give it a proper formula or name. Now, I have been studying mud fossils and the, the preserved remains of soft tissues 
that were preserved in saltwater mud floods. And, and I've done this for years now, and I have all the evidence, DNA supported, and all that stuff. Now, what they consist of is exactly this chemistry, which is the same chemistry that's in you. CH is hydrocarbons. Those are what is, your cell membranes are made out of hydrocarbons. That's exactly what they're made out of. CH2, CH3, carbon hydrocarbons. It's hydrophilic, hydrophobic layer that wraps around every cell in your body. And what else is in there? Same thing that's in you, ferrous oxides. That's in your blood, silicon. That's in your skin, your sodium. Um, carbon, more carbon, hydrogen, and all these other little bumps are different indicators of different minerals that are within living creatures. That's because that organic thing called Comet 67P was at one time part of a living creature. That's my statement. And I see it in the chemistry, and I see it in the anatomy, and I see it in all of the other things that are coming out of space. They are not just simple rocks, they are biological. Alright, that is a lung. It's a lung that came through space and crashed on Earth. And the reason it's all metal now and not gushy lung tissue is because it's smelted just like you would smelt it in a furnace, coming through space and boiled off all the organics and left the structural ferrous oxides in here. But you can see all the vascular entries of the lung. I have lots of these in there. It's very, very obvious. I'll show you one right in a second here. And that is the, what's left over. And this one came through as iron. Let me show you one that I have here. All right, this is a mud fossil lung. It's not iron like that one. It didn't come through the atmosphere. But it's completely loaded with iron inside here. Now, if this had come through space and smelted before all of the blood leaked out of it, it would be exactly what you see there. All right, I want to show you something. Uh, this is a giant human fingertip. It's been CAT scanned. That one hasn't been DNA tested, but it came out of the same hole with another one that was DNA tested. And then some other stuff like this right here that has the... It's part of the finger that has the bone ball on it, and this is the other side that actually has the, uh, you can see the, the, um, the, the uh, muscle tissue wrapped around that bone ball, which is on the other side of here. It's eroded off, and this all is the um, tendon. But all of that stuff came out of the same hole. There's a hand. I have the hole with palm. It's 36 inches wide. However, this is one that it was an, from an asteroid, uh, from a meteorite, and it's basically the same sort of size as that one, and it had the same structure, but when it came through, all the fleshy part, which is this stuff here, boiled away, and you came down to the tendinous material, see this fibrous looking mat, and this tendinous looking stuff, and then wh why did this side blow off and this side didn't blow off? Well, the reason is, is this side had the red blood in it and this tendinous material, and this is where the red blood collects, and that blows out. The black side does not blow out, and that's the vein side, and this is the end. Now, this is the same thing. This piece has come off on the side where the blood goes through, and that is the red blood side. And this would have blown out if it was ever exposed to that kind of heat because the red boils. The black does not, and that will not... You see the black blood there? It's hard to see, but if, if it was wetted, it could be seen a little better. Anyway, that is... Um, and then, of course, there's the apical tuft sits at the tip of the finger, and there would be one on this one, too. And... Um, this is what is left over after it got all parched and, and blistered coming through the atmosphere. And this boiled and exploded. There is blood in there. There is a lot of blood in here. That could be checked and looked at for what it is for DNA. This is where the tendon anchor ball is. That's a similar thing that's on 67P, same sort of thing. That's the same sort of neck that's out there. I have a video on this. That's that complete ball right there. It's right in this locked into the side of the finger and that's what allows you to move in your fingers and all this stuff. So this came through space. 
All of these things are in space. There is a ton of gases and molecules, and that accounts for the solar heating, and I also and the, for, and the corona, and I also believe it it accounts for something else, which is the Fraunhofer lines that they say are completely because the sun creates its own minerals. Now, I think that they're picking up a lot of the the absorption of the outflow of all of these organic mo molecules in space. They're, they're not, they're, that's what they're seeing. It's not that they're dense in the solar corona, I don't believe. Now, I could be wrong, but I, I think there's an experiment that I can show that could say one way or the other. Now, I don't think they've ever done it. I can't see any ex uh, any um, reference to this type of experiment, and I'll show you what it is. And then it would solve the whole issue. One time, very simple experiment. It could be done, I think, quite easily. Okay, I said I was going to talk about a couple different things, try to solve them in one fell swoop. 6,000 degrees at the surface of the sun, millions, 10 million they say, maybe more, at the, at the outside surface of the corona. In between here and there, how did it heat up to 10 million degrees? What heated it from here to here? I know what heated it. It's scrubbing through all the particles that are in space. We are whipping through the solar system, I mean through the galaxy, on the arm of the galaxy, ripping through space, which is loaded with molecules. As the astronauts say, they can smell things. The things are shooting off of all over the place. I, I see no other possibility. Now, so that's number one. I think we're scrubbing through ether, which they always knew years, you know, thousands of years ago. And we just decided that it didn't exist. Well, it does exist. And those are the molecules that are in space. And the other things that are in space are light that is sent from the sun on its way to collide with something. They are particles and they are also in space. They are negative particles and every single thing there is in the universe is coated with negative particles. As we push, every because every, every atom is coated with negatives. Everybody should understand this. So as negative particles in space, which are light, I'm saying they're electrons, they are flooding through this universe and eventually they will collide with something as a particle, impact with it, depending on how hard it hits it, how much it glows, how much heat it creates. Now, but between here and there, they are not nothing. They are obviously still particles. And I can show this in the light experience that, that we did years ago now. All right, so now I'm, I'm accounting for why this is 6,000, that's 10 million, because we're scrubbing through the atmosphere. What else does that mean? Well, what's in this atmosphere? I'm saying in the atmosphere is the things that they're saying is being made by the sun. I think they are maybe out here, just laying around out here. And as that light goes through them, we're not seeing light coming through the corona. We're seeing light hitting calcium and magnesium and sodium and iron and all this stuff in the air. Because we know it shot out of comet 67P. Why can't it hit it in the air? All right, so now we're going to go to the experiment that I'm talking about. All right, here's a very simple experiment. I think it can be done. You have to get outside the, the atmosphere of the Earth between two, uh, a sender and a receiver, and send some laser light through you know, full, full spectrum light, actually, you'd have to send. Send some full spectrum light across to another receiver a, a good distance away, a long distance away, and analyze what it does. Does it absorb anything? If it absorbs something, it means there's something there to be it absorbed it from. If it doesn't do anything, the light is exactly the same as it was here, then I agree. Space is empty. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think you're going to see all of these, inter these lines that they call the Fraunhofer lines which are absorption lines because of the minerals and metals and all of the different things that are in space that are spewing from the things that I just showed. So now I'd like to see somebody um, challenge this. I'm saying space is not empty and I'm saying we're scrubbing through ether because space is not empty and we're heating up the sun because space is not empty and we're heating up our atmosphere because space is not empty and Venus is spinning backwards and heating up like crazy because it's scrubbing twice as hard because it's not obeying the right hand rule 
all of these things and it doesn't have any magnetic field because it is going backwards and magnetic fields are created by negative particles spinning inside of other negative particles all right that is the nature of reality and of the universe and of ether and all all the particles that there are and uh, i have some good i believe research on the nature of light and energy and particles and literally the universe and how the solar system cascades through the universe rubbing and scraping and we could be entering a very violent phase in the ether right now because it does appear that everything is heating up quite a bit so are we entering dense space I don't know subscribe Give a thumbs up if you like it. Don't give a thumbs down because you don't believe in space. And um, God bless you all.